I'm pleased to introduce uh, Dr. Earl Stanford Richardson, who's the 11th president of Morgan State University in Baltimore. A native of Maryland, Dr. Richardson earned the Bachelor of Arts degree in social science from the University of Maryland Eastern Shore and the Masters of Science and Doctor of Education degrees from the University of Pennsylvania. He has been a fellow of the Ford Foundation and the Kellogg Foundation and has conducted extensive research on critical problems in higher education relevant to racial autonomy, desegregation, and integration. Since becoming president of Morgan State University, Dr. Richardson has fashioned an all-encompassing strategy for strengthening academic programs and stabilizing student enrollment. And Morgan now leads Maryland colleges and universities in the overall production of African-American baccalaureates and in the number of undergraduates in mathematics, science, and engineering. The lodestar of Dr. Richardson's leadership at Morgan State University and in higher education is his commitment to establishing a strong foundation of excellence and achievement in the African-American community. I just want to say I've had the opportunity to talk at some length uh, with Dr. Richardson about the challenges that face historically black colleges and universities. He is a creative thinker and I think brings an important perspective to the discussion today. Welcome. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. McEwen, for your support, Congressman McEwen, over the years, and now to Chairman uh, Miller. Let me just say that I appreciate the introduction by my Congressman John uh, Sarbanes, and uh, he and I have talked over and often about the value of our black colleges I appear today to join my colleagues in, yes, talking about the great value and contribution of our historically black colleges, but more important, to emphasize the great potential and the great promise that these institutions have for addressing some of the more vexing problems related to the social, economic, and political welfare of our society. I'm passionate about this because I believe that the realization of that promise is fleeting. And with every fleeting moment, I believe the impact on our society is devastating. At this point in time, I think that it has been now about five decades a little better than five decades since Brown. It has been over four decades since Title VI of the Civil Rights Act. It's been more than 16 years since Fordyce. And yes, much has been done to improve our historically black colleges, but nowhere near the amount that needs to be done to make us comparable to our white counterparts, nowhere near enough to make us as competitive in attracting students regardless of race and regardless of their academic achievement level. And so I think that there is now an urgency. There is an urgency about moving us toward that standard of comparability that we have been striving for for now over a half century. In the state of Maryland, the demographics are moving so quickly that now you are seeing, as you saw in the Washington Post just a few days ago, about what the changing demographics are in our country. And just a few months before then, there appeared in the Sun paper of Baltimore a similar article and we oftentimes talk about the relevance of that for our institutions of higher education. Well, those demographics are briefly saying to us that the minorities that we have so often spoke about are now very shortly going to be the majority. And those are the persons that are experiencing the greatest difficulty in terms of educational achievement and in terms of how they are able to move from the elementary secondary level to the post-secondary level. Yet, this is the pool, this is the pipeline 
from which this country will have to draw the workforce. And so we believe that it is imperative that we move to now ensure that these institutions that have served that minority population very, very well, that they now be made equal to and comparable to the majority institutions in our state and in our country. As I look at what is happening in our own state of Maryland, by the way, I am a native of Maryland. I went to high school, elementary school there. I went to high school there. I got my undergraduate degree there before going on to the University of Pennsylvania. And so I have a long history with it. I was there in the 60s when we were marching in the streets, uh, marching to remove the separate but equal and for us separate and unequal. And it pains me now that even 50, almost 60 years later, that we still have not achieved that higher mark that we were striving for uh, in the 60s. But I want to emphasize here that I think that that promise is still uh, before us. I think that that promise can be realized if indeed that we can move within our states on some of the compact agreements. Uh, in the state of Maryland, we had a compact agreement, several, but the last one lasting from 2000 to 2005. And after that, of course, uh, the state of Maryland did indeed send a report in saying that we had indeed complied with all of the requirements of that. Later on, a group that represented the interests of our historically black colleges, the Maryland Coalition for Equity and Excellence in Higher Education, submitted a rejoiner questioning many of the positions in that document. We still are waiting to find out uh, what the disposition is of, one, the agreement, two, the response of our state, and three, the rejoinder that was submitted by the third party on behalf of our historically black colleges. You've heard uh, from uh, Senator, uh, Congressman Sarbanes of Morgan's productivity within the state of Maryland the largest producer of African-Americans. And we've heard the term over and over again, African-American, or we've heard the term historically black colleges. Let me simply say, you should not be uncomfortable with the term. Historically black college as a designation represents a fact of history and not a statement of exclusion. We are open to students regardless of race and, yes, the difference between our institutions and the other institutions is that, yes, we want some of the most talented students. We want as many as we can get. But within our community, according to the standards that are now used on SAT scores, that represents only 12 to 15 percent of our students. And we happen to believe that you can just discard the other 85 percent that we have to find some way to move that other 85% to a level that they can be productive citizens, that they can, too, move through our elementary and secondary schools and then to our post-secondary schools and become the productive citizens that you want. We can make them the scientists and the engineers and the teachers and the professors, all of those things, but indeed, it has to be under the circumstances that provide uh, you, we provide to our students at our other institutions. So let me just sum up by saying, Mr. Chair, I think that our historically black colleges have done an excellent job over the years, and I think they hold great promise for these changing demographics. And if, in fact, we can have our institutions developed to a level of comparability and parity, so that we are as competitive as other institutions in attracting students regardless of their race and regardless of their background and regardless of their academic achievement. Thank you so very much, Mr. Chairman, uh, for the opportunity to speak.